building a wild rice pond using an excavator and a small tractor. Last year, River Refuge Seed Company and Duck Club grew wild rice in two ponds, just to the west of Scott Arian's waterfowl ponds. We harvested the crop in late summer. As is typical with wild rice, when harvested, 30% to 40% of the grain shatters and falls to the ground. This becomes the seed for the volunteer crop for the next year, and when reflooded, the best duck food ever. Scott watched the birds bog into the feed in these ponds all winter. Right then he decided he needed a rice paddy to grow wild rice. Scott and I walked the area where he would like his wild rice pond located. The ground was fairly level with a gentle slope from east to west. We viewed the soil maps and discovered the soil profile showed six inches or less of topsoil contained 30% to 40% clay, and below that, a few feet of subsoil that was 60 to 70% clay. I then dug some shallow test holes to confirm that there was sufficient clay. Perfect. When constructing a dike, it's always best to build it about 18 inches higher than the expected pond water level. We shot the grades with a laser transit level. In, it, in laying out the pond, we found that the dike at the level where the pond would be the deepest would need to be four and a half feet high, and one, and one to one and a half feet tall at the shallowest end. This would give us roughly a 10 acre pond. In the Willamette Valley of Oregon, wild rice grows best in water with a depth of from one to three feet. We are ready to start construction. We flagged what will be the edges of the pond. Using the excavator, I first make a path of where the dike will be built. I now start constructing the dike. I remove soil from what will be the inside of the pond and place it on what will become the outside edge of the dike. I travel around the three sides where the dike will go, removing topsoil. This also exposes the clay subsoil. As I place the soil on the dike, I pack it with the excavator bucket. I make another pass completely around the dike and begin reaching farther out in the field for soil, exposing more clay as I go. I'm beginning to bring the top of the dike to our determined grade level. I clean the loose topsoil as I go and I pack it on the dike.
I begin digging about six inch layer of the now exposed clay from the bottom. I am placing a 12 inch layer of this clay on the inside over the top and over the top edge of the dike. Also, I tie this clay into the bottom, creating an impervious bowl. The clay layer on the inside of the dike must have continuity with the bottom clay. If this isn't done, water will leach out under the dike. By only removing six inches of the clay from the borrow pit, I keep from creating a canal inside the dike. In fact, even where the clay is removed, we will refill this with good soil. As I work my excavator along the new dike, I continue to pack and smooth the top. You can see here that I am placing one to two feet of clay on the inside of the dike and connect this clay with the bottom. This is the deep side of the pond. As I place clay, Scott is wheel packing it with his tractor. This is an efficient way to seal the clay cover. Scott then disks the bottom of his new rice pond. Scott spin spreads about 75 pounds of wild rice seed per acre. It's broadcast on fairly rough ground. He will then pull a sprocket roller over the field, crushing the rough soil clumps and thereby covering the seed. We've completed the pond just before the first rains. Annual ryegrass has volunteered with the first rain. This volunteer cover crop will drown out when the pond fills with winter rains. 
This will leave a nice clean wild rice patty. Winter rains have filled the new pond. It's August now. Scott's 10 acre pond of wild rice is ripening. When the birds arrive in the fall, we know right away where they're going to be feeding. 